This is Twit. All right, we've been waiting for this for a long time, Steve. I'm very excited. Uh, you mentioned this last week that you would have uh, these guys on the show, and um, we even showed the video. Was it Andrea Mitchell who had plowed into those cones? No, it was uh, uh, Leslie Stahl. Leslie Stahl, who, that's right. Who on, yeah. he was on 60 Minutes a couple of weeks ago, one of their segments was talking about the problem with the, the current lack of, of real security in automobiles. And I, I was just, I was floored by the idea that there was no longer a reliable connection between the brake pedal that the driver controls and the braking of the vehicle, which the pedal is supposed to, to, to enact, essentially. I mean, the idea, I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, you know, we've got software because we want to have USB and, and play our iPhones through our, our cars, and we want OnStar, and we want to be able to approach the car and have the doors magically unlock, and, you know, all these fancy things. Oh, and I'd like to have, you know, the car know whose key is using it so that it automatically adjusts the seats so that it's, you know, it remembers the, the preferences of the current driver. All of that is cool stuff. But I don't, in the process, want to sacrifice the fundamental imperatives of the way the car works. That is, you know, that the thing you need is when you press on the brakes, you stop. And of course, we know what was about a year ago that Toyota went through the acceleration problems. We never really got a straight answer about right. that. There was some nonsense about, oh, the carpet was getting <laughs> tangled up you that know, was their story. In, in the accelerator <laughs> yeah. pedal. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then a couple of years ago, we covered on this podcast the UCSD researchers who were working with, uh, I think, University of Washington. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the first, the, the first surfacing of our of our sort of this low level concern that something was wrong with the way cars were being developed, that it just like, you know, and it's not surprising either because this is what we see time and time again is, is a system which is not computerized then begins to get computers, but the focus is on making it work. And only after the fact, sometimes after a great deal of pain is making it secure. So by, by gr happy coincidence, I was going through the Security Now mailbag a couple of weeks ago, and I ran, I ran across a note from one of the guys at Galois, which is the WW, or not WWW, but G-A-L-O-I-S.com, who were the people who were shown on the 60 Minutes report who are... Uh, recipients of funding from DARPA because just in the same way that the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency was the originator of the internet, now DARPA has something called uh, uh, HACOMS, sort of an awkward acronym, but the best way to pronounce it is HACOMS, where they're funding various organizations, whether whether commercial en entities or educational or research or, or governmental, whatever. They don't really care who they're giving money to, but they've pulled together a project whose goal is to tackle the challenge of truly securing our cars. And so uh, for this week's podcast, uh, thanks to their interest, I mean, their, their Security Now listeners, uh, at least some of them, uh, we have the guys who have successfully hacked not only cars but UAVs to talk to us about, you know, the nature of the vulnerabilities, how acute the vulnerabilities are, and their focus has been on working with DARPA and the other, the other team members on re coming up with ultimately and someday a true solution to this problem. Well, without further ado, let's say hello to Lee Pike and uh, Pat Hickey from Galois.com. Uh, Hi. Hi, Lee. Hi, Pat. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Good, good to have you. So what, what so, was the brand of car Leslie was uh, driving? No, 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 no. We can't. Yeah, we've been asking <laughs> so, 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 so he... That's he, all he, I want to know. <laughs> so I don't point, buy it. Is all cars have this problem. Yeah. 
um, and, and they increasingly have this problem. Uh, there are somewhere uh, as many as 50 so-called ECUs, you know, sort of autonomous uh, subassembly computer units in a high-end car, and even economy cars will have maybe half that, you know, in the low 20s. And so, so the reason the make and model wasn't shown was, first of all, they don't want to really upset anyone, and it's really not fair to, to discriminate because all cars today are like this. Well, wait a minute. All cars are like this? I mean... Take it, take it away, guys. You can hack my car? <laughs> uh probably not in specific. What we've been part of is, you know, security researchers have found vulnerabilities. Uh, we reproduced some of those um, to help the 60 Minutes folks demonstrate that. So each TV. model would have a different exploit. That's right. Uh, yeah, or but makes might have some components that are common across several model years. And, and many are going to be shared because it's all coming from the same suppliers, uh, the subcomponents. Right. What is, a t what is the typical avenue of exploitation? Well, so, so uh, it depends. I mean, there's two kind of classes. So one class of exploits is if you have physical access to the car, and this makes it much easier because you can basically uh, hook right into the data bus. Yeah, we've and, always said that. If somebody has your computer, you're, you're, right. you're pretty much screwed. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's even easier than that because if they have your computer and you've got an encrypted hard drive, it's password protected, uh, it, you know, there's a little, some challenge to get into your uh, <laughs> car. There's no such challenge to get into an automobile. Interesting. And CAN bus is the bus of, on most of these? That's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah we use CAN and, bus and for our audio. Can you hack my audio? <laughs> 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 one of the one, one of the problems that you, you could sort of divide attacks into two categories. There's there's like a, a targeted attack where someone specifically wants to attack someone else. Like you know, uh, the the uh, Putin is unhappy with one of his adversaries, for example, and decides to, to to go after them. And then the other would be sort of opportunistic attacks. More you know, and and we see both classes of those attacks on the internet and it turns out that the same sort of the same sort of models apply here for example the diagnostic computers in car dealerships are also connected to the internet and so when that computer connects to your car that's a standardized interface and it's a means for the diagnostic computer to access the networks in the car and all of those little ECUs are firmware reprogrammable, meaning that they can be attacked. That's right. Yeah, and furthermore, you know, you can, um, you know, with a computer, you need to actually grab it. If you want to reprogram it, put a new program on it, you need to have access. But you know, for convenience, um, you don't want to have to pull out every a small ECU in the vehicle. So you can do this all over the, over the bus, which makes it uh, even more problematic.